Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of History Vault Armenia. Last time we talked about Silesia and Armenia and the pre mid 19th century Russian, Persian, and Ottoman Armenia in brief. And in this episode, we will discuss what led up to the Armenian genocide and why it happened. In the Ottoman Empire, before the reforms of the later 19th century, they had a system with many layers of autonomy for their various non Muslim subjects and some lesser degree Muslim subjects too. Highest of these were the Abrahamistic communities falling under Muslim rule who paid their easia. But the main factor deciding the right for these non-Muslims in the realm was the current sultan and ruling cabinet, and to what degree they integrated Sharia law and the common law. Under many rulers, the Christians and Jews were organized in somewhat autonomous communities called millet, often ruled by local religious leaders. They got religious autonomy, could control education and inheritance in most aspects of civil law. But they still had to follow the Ottoman criminal law, and they could not testify against Muslims. They could also not build holy buildings, perform religious acts in a way that would disturb Muslims, ride horses, bear weapons, and Muslims got less punishment when committing crimes against non-Muslims. This system was more accepted than most in the Middle Ages, but had become fairly outdated in the mid-19th century. This was also the time when the Ottoman Empire was starting to decline. And because of this, many European powers negotiated special rights for their citizens living in the empire, such as lower taxes and not being tried in Ottoman courts. Soon passports on these countries were given and sold to the Ottoman Christians so that they also could enjoy these privileges. This law angered many Ottomans, stating it was against their country's sovereignty. Later, Ottoman also lost wars to the European powers and they demanded rights for the Christians, such as seized at local governments and more equality. While this caused large backstab of some, a new ideology called Ottomanism had formed in the empire, which saw the best way to heal the empire was to unite the ethnic and national groups in the empire into one, called Ottoman. While the Ottoman government wrote a law making all subjects equal, still had not removed the previous laws allowing the millet system, so they had two laws contradicting each other. It was also poorly implemented and got backlash from all sides. The non-Muslim religious leaders was angry because non-religious leaders could now have power over their communities. Muslims did not want Christians to get their privileges and feared that the foreign powers would still want to give Christians more rights. And it could also be argued that the Christian peasant was more privileged than a Muslim peasant. And the non-Muslim Christians and you did not want to lose their privileges. And equality was not truly implemented so some law still favored Muslims. Because of this I'm reading in Armenia. The Armenian Patriarch filed a complaint to the Ottoman government and they responded by sending a commotion to oversee the region. The Ottomans were soon forced to enact a constitutional monarchy and the Russians after winning a war demanded that they would overview the Armenian reforms but the British failed the Russian domination over the region and stopped this from happening. And a new peace treaty was signed where Armenians would try to get their voice heard and be given autonomy. While the Ottomans accepted this, without the Russians there was nothing stopping them from being just that, promises. And to keep them that, the Ottomans claimed there was no part in their empire where the Armenians had a majority. Because of nomads and bad senses, this could neither be proven nor disproven. The current Sultan, Abdul Hamid II, thought the way to heal the nation was to unite the Muslim subjects and cared less about the non-Muslim ones. He stopped creating reforms and stopped enforcing the old ones. While the government did still side with Armenians when they were oppressed, they did nothing to help them and often local authorities violently suppressed the Armenians. This soon angered many Armenians who started to protest and revolt against Ottomans. The Armenians were suppressed or even massacred. The number of the Armenians killed during these revolts is estimated to be around 90 and 300 thousands. While the government seemingly wasn't behind the massacres, they encouraged it by supplying radical Islamists with weapons and indicating that they wanted the Christians dead. Since this encouragement was given by the Caliph, they sensed that it was their religious duty to execute these non-Muslims. The great powers tried to put a stop to this by forcing more heavy restrictions on Ottoman, but their inner squabbles and the desire to take control of the Ottoman lands stopped this from happening. Many uprisings started to happen in Ottoman Romelia, and some succeeded, leading to the Ottomans fearing that Armenia would be next, and it being in the heartland of their empire. With its independence, the fall of the empire would ensure and the great powers of Europe would conquer them. The idea of Turan and Turkish superiority based on social Darwinism started to pop up more and more. The Committee of Union and Progress, or CAP, 
an Ottoman underground political party with the goal of trying to save the empire from its fall started to gain more popularity. They saw science as the reason for western superiority in recent times and saw themselves as society's doctor wanting to cure the society's problems by the way of science and it was their duty given to them by God. In the early stages of CUP there is some agreement with Armenian revolutionaries operating in parts of the country but this was extremely fragile and frozen in Istanbul mostly by Armenians demanded reforms. The CUP used this to form anti-Armenian sentiment in the capital. The Armenian and the CUP continued negotiation but it mostly came to nothing. And when the Armenians demanded autonomy, COP complained they would not allow this, since they needed more unity in the land, not more disunity. They also thought that this meant Armenia just wanted to break away, and could even consider the other points of equality, justice and liberty if the Armenians would not demand autonomy. Even with all this, COP allied themselves with the Armenian Revolutionary Federation, or Tashnax, the main group for Armenian autonomy and independence. They had, they had hoped that this would increase tight with Armenians so that they could more easily make the Armenians Ottomans once they came to power and they had no thought of giving them autonomy. The unionists would try to get rid of everything that would stand in the way of their sacred goal of saving their empire and establish a secret organization to eliminate political opponents and threats. The cup took inspirations from the Balkan nationalists seeing anyone who was with them as an enemy and they were very strict even to the ones who cooperated seeing that these nationalist movements seemed successful. The Committee of Union and Progress and other political parties collectively called the Young Turks state a coup establishing a constitutional monarchy in the empire. This new regime was met with joy from the Christian subjects of the empire, hoping for chains and many who had fled during the Amid regime came back. But this joy was soon ended when an Islamic counter-revolution happened, but it was crushed by Kop, the Dashnaks and other parties of the constitution. But it took a while before they could be defeated, so that in the meantime radical Islamists in Cilicia started to massacre Christians in what would become known as the Adana massacres in support of the counter-revolution. 30,000 Christians were killed. After this, 124 of the perpetrators were killed, along with seven Armenians who resisted. After this, Cup and the rest of the ruling coalition increased the amount of Armenians in parliament and strengthened their relation with the Dashnaks. One reason for this was to prevent revolt, but the other was to hope that the Armenians would rebel against the Russians and instead create their state there. The Cup wanted to implement citizenship to all subjects of the empire to the centralized state. But most groups within the empire had their own advantages and disadvantages and while all wanted to rid themselves of their disadvantages but keep their advantages which made this much harder. This was especially true for the non-Turkish subjects because it was the Turkish way they wanted to be the official showing early stages of Turkism. This started to be more and more prevalent as the only language allowed in school soon became Turkish. And the government started to violently oppose those who opposed this change and forbade people from forming organizations bearing the name of the nationality or nation. It was also not only Christians who opposed these new reforms as evident by the Albanian revolt of 1910 which happened in large because of these educational reforms. Because of the failure of these reforms the Ottomans enacted martial law in 1909 which would last almost to the end of the empire, with a short period without it in 1912. This came with many setbacks such as a law to abolish public gatherings and press freedom, and the killing of anti-unionist reporters and intellectuals became common. With this also came the rise of Turkism instead of Ottomanism, since many saw it as impossible to unite the Ottoman people into one. They now said they would try to achieve their unity to share diplomatic and economic goals rather than a shared identity. The martial way became more and more popular amongst unionists. They, they still said they were Ottomanists, but they changed the definition to Islamification and Turkification. The idea that Turkism, Islamism and Ottomanism were almost the same proposed by some scholars helped smooth the transition more towards this. As it was said, Ottoman was the same as Turk and Islamism was the same as Turkism. The main problem with the Ottomanization reforms were the focus on Turkification. But another problem came with the great powers claiming they wanted humanism and democracy but did things to the opposite effect of this because it would fit the imperial goals which were more important to them than the human rights of the Ottoman subjects. Because of this the Ottomans started to equate humanism and democracy with imperialism and colonialism. After their unpredictable defeat, the Balkan Wars, many Ottomans saw this as a punishment from God to prove that they needed to pull their society together and the main way proposed to do this was Turkism and it became adopted by Cup. 
This meant they wanted revenge and was feeling betrayed by the former subject and they were scared that the same would happen with the rest of their subjects and he needed to stop this by any means possible. Many of these regions fall into the Balkan states and the European colonial realms had lost Muslim communities, many of whom suffered much persecution and in some cases even massacre. Many of these people fled to the now ever shrinking borders of the Ottoman Empire to escape it. And for them it was the right choice, many who did not were the subjects of these massacres. About 850,000 of these Muslim refugees fleeing the persecution settled in predominantly Armenian lands of eastern Anatolia. In the meantime, some Turkist extremists in Kapsartu believed that the Turks almost were superhuman and that their state was sacred. They might have believed it for longer, but only now reveal it since Turkism became a more accepted ideology now. A new law was passed making it necessary for the Turkish language to be used in commercial happenings. And an institution was formed to try to make the Turks the only bourgeoisie in the nation, removing the Christians and to some degree non-Turkish Muslims from such positions. The means of establishing this was a timed criminal, such as through corruption and the black market, but they defended it by calling it sacred. Later, in 1914, they even went so far to confiscate Christian property to achieve this goal. Earlier, in 1913, Another coup took place, establishing three cup leaders, Enver, Talat and Jemal Pasha, all Turkish extremists to the government. As Turkism developed, the focus became more and more to rid the empire of its non-Muslim component. Talat Pasha, the Minister of the Interior and Finance, was a strict believer in this. Another concept which started to gain more traction was Turan, the region where all the Turks lived, and Turanism, the idea that all of these regions should be united. A group called the Special Organization was soon formed with a new purpose by Kap and integrated into the Ministry of War, led by another of the three Pashas, Enver, and was originally formed to suppress Arab nationalism and Western imperialism in areas such as Libya. The other official goal of the special organization was to achieve pan-Islamism and Turanism. Uh, by trying to initiate rebellions in the Turkish and Muslim world, an internal division of the special organization tried to make this goal come true inside of the empire. After the fall of Rumelia, the Ottomans knew the Armenians would be next and would do anything to stop it. At first they tried to implement reforms demanded by the Armenian church as to stop the killing and looting, but many Kurds were so opposed to this it was almost impossible. The Patriarchate tried to implement reforms for two more years but got no response and then resigned seeing that they had no power. Russia took an interest in the region, arming both Armenians and Kurds as they decided to start a conflict demanding intervention so they could conquer the area of Ottoman Armenia. The Russian also brought the attention of the other great powers, bringing up the Armenian Christians more highly in European politics. But this only brought the division of the Ottoman Empire more highly to the European government. In the mission to Turkify Anatolia, the three Pashas would discuss how they would get rid of the Greeks and Armenians. Their main obstacle was the fear of foreign intervention. They decided the best way to do this was then to use the special organization as to hide government support. The organization started to perform raids on Greek villages and formed Greek labor battalions in hope that the Greeks would flee the country and emigrate to Greece because of this. But they believed that it would stop the European powers from caring was false and this operation had to be halted because of foreign intervention. But when the world war started this was no longer an issue as that was the powers main concern and when the Ottomans later joined the war the Entente had no seen the matters, and the Ottomans' war allies could do nothing fair to lose them as an ally. And with the Ottomans joining the war, the deportation took a more economic approach, as the Ottomans could use the belongings of the former subjects to fuel the war effort, and these efforts proved to be so successful the Cup decided to use them for future deportations. With the war, the Union saw this as a possibility to regain the lost territories in the Balkans. Some even wanted to expand to the rest of the Muslim world under their rule, but as they started to see defeats in the war, this dream started to fade. They also started to believe that as what they saw as the previous rulers' humanist policies led to the rebellions in the Balkans, and that Armenians would do the same if they started to give them new reforms, or even keep the old ones. The Union started to become even more hostile towards Armenian after they lost in the 1914 Caucasus campaign. Another campaign the Ottomans feared was the Gallipoli campaign, where the Unions theorized if they would lose, the capital would fall and Armenians rebel. And the empire collapsed. The special organization units started to put in most Ottoman armies 
and they were put to the task of attacking Muslim villages in Russia to provoke them into rebellion and fighting with the Ottomans. These special organization units, who were also part in the Greek deportation, were then trained and sent away in small groups in order to raid, plunder, murder and report. Cup went to Armenia to discuss the proposal of the Armenians Dasna to rebel in Russian Armenia, but they refused. Some say this was a turning point for the Dasna Turk relations. Other points to evidence that this was just a ploy to start up a special organization unit in the region. Special organizations started to work against Armenians by raiding and plundering Armenian villages in Russia. But once they started plundering, there was nothing stopping them from plundering Christian and Muslim villages alike. But soon the Ottoman armies started to lose ground to the Russian army with many Armenian battalions. And when they reached the Ottoman Empire, they raided and plundered the Muslim villages, much as the special organization had done to the Armenians in their campaign. All of this is about to lead up to the horrific event that is soon to follow, but more on that next time, as Armenia genocide truly starts.